I'm delighted to say I'm joined now here at the Oval by uh, one of the greatest Irish League footballers the game's ever produced. Well, that's according to him anyway. Uh, Liam Beckett, and I'm glad to see the fringe is okay for the bit of TV here. McLean's Liam, looking forward to the big kickoff. Really am, Adrian, as, as like everything else, every season you can't wait to see it end sometimes. It's only finished until you can't see it starting again, and, and I'm like everybody else, yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Not over an hour, I would have to say, by uh, the preparation that's been done by the Irish Football Association, I might add, I think that it, I think the game could do with uh, something to give it a, a, a lift. I think the game's been dying on its feet this last, not only last year, but the last few years. Uh, and I think that they have once again uh, let that chance slip. Now you obviously will uh, talk about that in your column in the newsletter and of course in your, your role as a, as a pundit for BBC Radio Ulster and when you look at it, I was making the point earlier to Stephen Beacon in the Telegraph, the local media do an awful lot of good for the local game but yet sometimes the authorities do let us down. Well I couldn't agree more and I think you've nailed it uh, perfectly. I think the media do all in their power because let's be honest we all love the game. And, and we try to promote it as best we can. But you know, it has, to, it has to come from the top. It has to come from the Irish Football Association. I think the split has outweighed its usefulness. I think the, this top six split was a good idea at the time. I was all for it. I think like everything else, uh, change is needed. Uh, and I would very often propose changes, but I don't know the people at the AFA just don't seem to, to listen, you know. and. and uh, I think this, our saving grace last year was, was uh, how Cliftonville played, how well they played, the classy brand of passing slick football they played, uh, and the introduction of Balna Mallard, who people thought they're only in here and they'll try and survive this year. Survival has to be their first aim. Not only did they survive, they ended up in the top six. Tremendous achievement. People really relished the challenge of going to Balna Mallard. Uh, it's a three-day pony trek from Balamone where I live, <laughs> but I still look forward to it because they're great people down there. They're just ordinary people, and I think Balna Mallard and Cliftonville. I think they saved our season last year. Now you talk about the IFA, and of course the IFA have basically transported the responsibility for the league to this new uh, league setup, and I know they've got plans for for launches, but. I still go back to it, Liam. I launched two or three days before the kickoff. It's not enough. It should be. It should be on a weekly basis, you know. And, and I, I feel we didn't make even enough out of our, our success in Europe. I agree totally. I agree totally. I think the clubs have really performed heroically in Europe uh, pre-season, uh, especially Linfield, you know, and, and so unlucky to go out on away goals. And I think that you know the clubs can do so much. The media can do so much. The fans can do so much. But we must get leadership from the top. And whoever's in charge of that, you know yourself, you've been in this game a long time, you know the football game inside out, and it needs to be promoted, and it needs to be promoted by the powers that be. And I think we like that, and, and you need to try things. What's wrong with summer football for a couple of seasons? Do we see how it goes? Puts us on a par with the likes of Derry City, with the likes of some of the other European clubs, gives us a better chance when Europe comes around to be more competitive, uh, and it also maybe suits the fans better. Uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained. If it's not a success, we can revert back to the old methods. But you've got to try something. Interesting too, Liam, I'm sure there's some people watching as well too who wouldn't be Irish League fans. I go to the Irish League all the time. I think people out there need to realise it's a very good product. Some of the football players, some of the football can be poor, but then that's like any game. But some of the football can be top drawer. It's, the product's excellent, Adrian. I think we have some tremendous young players. Uh, and you know, it's OK talking about the big high profile clubs in England and in Scotland. But did you ever sit down at home and you're really geared up to watch a top class English League Premier League match and you have a big mug of tea and within five minutes you're flicking channels because it's absolute rubbish. And, and you know we have a great product here but we've got to entice the fans out we've got to make it that the fans can enjoy it we've got to make it that it's cost effective as well you know a, a parent taking in a couple of lads or whatever or, or a couple of children to a game it must be that there's there are incentives there to bring the family out because we have to look at the new generation of fans I think youngsters to be honest under a certain age should be free if they're along with a paying adult I think they should be free there that's are not unusual Liam you know the GA have been doing it for years of course like, you know, and all sports should be learned from I each couldn't other. agree more. Yes, this should all be. It should be one sport and family, and we should be able to see how effective it, uh, it is in other sports and take that and, and 
and let them lead by example and follow suit if it's a success. We don't seem to do that. You know, I see kids still getting charged to go in. Then by the time you get them something to eat and buy a program, maybe they want a shirt or whatever, it becomes really expensive. We are in a global e uh, economic downturn, as we all know. Money's tight. Let's get the incentive out to the farms. It's the, it's the farms that matter, Adrian. And that's why you're seeing every season a decrease in attendance numbers. Well, I think we need to try and arrest that for a start because the quality of football is there. Now, wait a minute. You talked about Cliftonville playing some very good, sexy football uh, on, their, 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 uh, on their plastic pitch. They had a great season. But Linfield, now, after a dreadful season, they bought a lot of players. They look good in Europe. Is this the time when David Jeffrey comes back and says, right, OK, one season is a blip, not acceptable the second season? I think it's totally unacceptable. And nobody will tell you that any quicker than David Jeffrey. Uh, last season's uh, record by Linfield standards was a poor one, to say the least. And they just don't take that. That's not acceptable at Wonser Park. Because they are the biggest club in Ireland, let's be honest. And from the biggest club does carry its additional pressures. David Jeffrey is expected, his team's expected to win every day, every time they're out. Uh, and that didn't happen. Last. And they, they were a mass of points behind, Cliff, uh, behind Cliftonville. Uh, and Cliftonville played such an attractive brand of football. Although, having said that, Adrian, I feel that they weren't expected to win the league last year. And they came in underneath the radar, so to speak. Uh, and where all the emphasis was maybe on how poorly Linfield were doing, Cliftonville were knocking up the points and accumulating the points. And before you knew it, it was too big a gap for anybody to close. And Cliftonville won the league, deservedly so, by far the best team in the Irish League last year. I still think they'll start favourites because they're the holders of the league title, why not? Uh, and, and I still think they'll be able to play that attractive brand of football. My big concern would be this year they'll be the favourites in many people's eyes and the expectancy levels will now have reached that level that Linfield generally have to deal with. So f for that fact, I think that Cliftonville will find it more difficult to deal with uh, the fact that they're now the favourites. It's okay when you come in as underdogs. I've won a few things myself as an underdog, <laughs> and I know how it is. There's more pressure on the favourites. And now you'll have Linfield coming in, and I like their new signings, particularly three of them. I think Tuffy's a good sign in the goalie. Uh, I think uh, that uh, Andy Waterworth's a good signing, and my favourite signing of them all is Sean Ward. I think both of them from here at the Oval? Both of them from here at the Oval. And just moving on then, I'll be going on to the Glens very shortly. I think they will they will miss those players big time. They'll also miss the experience, I'm, I'm in Glen Torn now, of Colin Nixon and Stephen Carson. And you're not only losing quality, you're losing a lot of experience. That's why I think the Glens will struggle this season. I mean that. Uh, I, I, I like the people at Glen Torn. They're always very kind to me when I'm here. But I'm being totally honest, I think it will be a season of toil for them. Do you think, Liam, it'll be uh, Cliftonville, Linfield and then the best of the rest, do you think? I uh, think that Linfield uh, are going to push Cliftonville really, really hard this season. I think you're looking at some one of those two who will be the champions. I can't see past Crusaders for the third position. I think Stephen Baxter has slowly but methodically built a good squad of, of uh, youth and experience. They're well used to their uh, plastic surface now. Uh, and there's, do you know what they have? They have that thing that Cliftonville have, Adrian, and I call it togetherness. And they have a great togetherness, a great bond, a great camaraderie. Cliftonville have it, Crusaders have it. And I think the crews, good outside bet for the cops, great cop tradition. I don't think they have all in their, uh, all in their armory to, to, to lift the league title, but I think they're a good outside bet for the cops as are Porter Down. Uh, any team with Kevin Braniff and Gary Twig in their team has to be considered a threat. I think Porter Down will not threaten the league title this season, but they're a good outside bet for the Cups. Glenavon likewise, uh, they're, they're neighbours and rivals. Gary Hamilton's made some good signings. I think nobody at Glenavon will want to see them down where they've been all season, mm. uh, the past season, down fighting relegation. You know, they have some high-profile players on there now. Bates and all those people are there, good players. I think they'll expect them to be in the top six. And do you think it'll be the usual suspects almost uh, for the, 
the latter or the, the bottom half of the table, the likes of Gannon Swifts might struggle there, you know what I mean? Some of the new lads might, what do you think? What well, about you know, Warren I Point think this is the saving grace for our season, is the fact that Warren Point are up. And who in their right mind would have thought Warren Point would be playing Irish League Premiership football three or four years ago? And all their games, it has to be said, at Dungannon Swifts. And all their games at Dungannon Swifts. Likewise, Ards coming into the league. And I know you have these people who say they shouldn't be in the league because they don't have their own pitches. Give them time. Let's accept it for what it is. I think it's a breath of fresh air. I'm really looking forward to seeing Ards in the Premiership and Warren Point. And as for Dungannon Swifts, I think there should be medals struck for that McAree family and, and the rest of the boys up there that run that place because they have a small fan base, they have an excellent pitch, a really tidy, spotless ground, small fan base and small player budget and yet every year they manage to survive, they manage to provide Premiership football for the town of Dungannon and I, I think that's an absolute credit to them. I think also too, uh, on a small point, they've installed a brand new plastic pitch uh, for training facilities. That's bound to help them, Liam. I was speaking to Joe just, he <coughs> rang me there about that and he was telling me all about it. And, and that'll help them, yes. And it might even help them you know, generate some income because you do need... That's one thing Irish League football's crying out for is proper training facilities for Premier League clubs. Uh, and then they can generate some interest. If, if, if it has a 4G pitch, they can obviously let it to the public and so on. It's a good form of generating uh, uh, some income. Uh, Joe McAree, I think, has done wonders at Dungannon Swifts. And whilst the McAree family are still up there, I think that that club will be... I just think that they're a great club for the younger, uh, up-and-coming clubs with a small fan base, but aspirations of being a Premier League club, I think, take a look at Dungannon see how their infrastructure works, take a leaf out of their book, do it that way, and you might you might succeed. Now, I'm going to have to ask you here to uh, just really broaden your imagination here, and imagine that Joel Taggart has given you a favour, okay, which is a, a really, really stretch in the imagination. So You're Joel really Taggart, pushing it. Yeah, right, really, we're really pushing it out here now, Liam. So Joel's giving you a favour. Who's going to win the Irish League? I'm going to have to say Linfield. And that's going to be tight, Adrian, because I think Cliftonville will be favourites. But I think in terms of squad depth, and I think the league is, is all about depth and squad, and I think as you start to go down the bench and you start to work your way off the first choice 11, I just think Linfield have more, uh, more in their arsenal than Cliftonville do. Cliftonville have a great start in 11. They have a decent three or four on the bench. But take a few suspensions and a few injuries, and that can that can have a heavy uh, toll. Take a heavy toll in your your squad, and I just think Linfield are better geared for it. I think the incentives there it's a must that Linfield lift one of the big two, and I'm referring to either the league, which is the one everybody wants, the best team in the league, wins the Irish League. Not always the best team in the league wins the cup. Uh, that can because it's a one-off thing. Over the long period of a league season. I think Linfield will do it this year. I think Cliftonville will push them very hard, but just the fact that that favourites tag is going to be there in inverted commas around them every time they take the pitch may just take its toll. Now, I'm going to ask you this again. This time Stephen Watson has given you a favour. I know you don't like doing this, but if you were asked to give the team most likely to struggle and to be at the very bottom at the end of the season, who would you go for there? Uh, I haven't got a chance to see what ours are going to be like. I haven't got a chance to see what Warren Point are going to be like, but I'm going to opt for some one of those two, uh, either ours or Warren Point. I think I love the structure, the infrastructure at Balna Mallard. They've done their homework. They know where they've come from. They know what it's going to take to sustain Premiership football. I think playing at no real fixed home is going to affect Warren Point and ours. I think that's where Balna Mallard had a step uh, and ahead of them because they had their own fabulous surface the best in the league by far but I think Warren Point and Ards will struggle and if I have to pick one of them I'm sorry it's Warren Point Liam there you are I really appreciate that very much and despite the win you know your fringe stayed out of the shot which was great <laughs> kid wasn't it you know we really appreciate having Liam back at McLean's TV number one number one well done son <laughs>